Thanks for joining us on the NRT Now podcast, part of the largest Christian music site online, newreleasetoday.com. Sit back and relax as we chat with your favorite artists, introduce you to new artists, and more. Now here's your host, Jake. Hey, y'all. Welcome to episode 63 and our last episode of 2020. And I just want to say thank you for spending some time with us here. And just thank you for spending time with us all year here. And and I know it's been a crazy year. It's been weird. It's been tough. It's been hard. It's been all the things that we can say. But I'm oddly thankful for 2020. There's been a lot of growth that's happened with me personally. And just really have been confronted with some areas that I've needed to work on that I didn't even know that I needed to work on this year. And just spending time with family, just realizing the importance of time and presence And I'm not sure if I would have really understood and looked at this if not forced to. And I said, I'm not taking away just all the craziness and all the frustration, all the stress and the hurt and heartache and everything that's come with this year. But throughout this year, I know one of the recurring themes has been the effect of this pandemic and touring being shut down and a bunch of stuff like that as we've talked with the artists. And it's no different in this episode with Zach Williams as we kind of recap the year. What I really hope is that you hear what God is able to do in the midst of something that we feel is terrible, something that just brings us heartache and pain and stuff that's tough. Like I said, I just really hope that you hear the hope and the way God moves even through these situations. So I'm not convinced that God causes these situations to happen, but nevertheless that he works through these situations. So I hope as we close out 2020 here, that we can look forward to 2021 and hopefully get back to something that looks like normal. And I hope that you have a very happy new year. But I also hope that what we learned in 2020 and what's been put on our hearts in 2020 stays with us into 2021 and that the growth that we've had this year and the perspective that we have this year is not lost as we turn the calendar. So, and happy new year. Welcome to 2021 if this is when you're listening to this episode. But, man, I just want to say thank you for spending the time with us for this year in 2020. And with that, without further ado, here's my conversation with Zach Williams. with Zach Williams, the one and only. I don't know if we are calling you your own or the other half of Dolly Parton in the big single now. I'm not sure quite <laughs> how that sits, but man, that song has absolutely blown up this year. Uh, I'll take whatever you want to call me, man. That's that's fine. Uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy to see the success the songs had. I mean, uh, I felt like it was a great song when, when we finished it, but I think adding Dolly's voice to it just brought it to a whole nother level, so... I was just grateful that she wanted to be a part of the song. So it's gotten you a couple of awards nominations this year so far. I mean, we got the Grammy nod. Who cares about that? But we've got the We Love <laughs> Awards nod for that song this year as well. That's what's yeah. really important in this whole thing. You know, I don't know either. Like, I don't think I've been up for a We Love Christian Award. I don't think I've been up for any of these awards before. We're going to have to check on that one because I have no idea why that would have never happened with some of your previous work. That would be sad if that hasn't happened yet. But if nothing else, we fixed it. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Well, it's it's nice to be nominated. It's always nice to have people see your work and, and, and honor you for it. So that's pretty cool. This interview has actually been kind of in the works since March. What's crazy about this is I was supposed to be there in March in your Dallas show or at your Dallas show yeah. when yeah. the word came down that everything was shutting down. All the concerts were done. I was hoping that that would kind of be the last hurrah before all that kind of went crazy. That was our last show. I mean, we had everything set for the show that night when they came in and and asked us to tear everything down and go home. And so that day was the end of it all. So pretty crazy. Yeah, I was getting ready to get off work and head there to volunteer at the event and got the word. You of course, like just go home with that because it (laughs) did get shut down. But it's really cool that you guys didn't shut it down. You guys didn't tear everything down yet, yeah. but nope. the last kind of hurrah, the last live recording before the quarantine pause there happened. And that was just yeah. so cool to see. 
so we had everything set for the for the show and our and our all the guys on our crew was like you know before we tear this down do you guys want to make some noise and people were like yeah and so we had our camera with this and we recorded a little acoustic performance and I was glad we did because it gave us some content to get up you know, when we realized, hey, this is this is going to last longer than a couple of weeks and we're not going to get to do our tour now. So still had a connection to everybody. So it was pretty cool. From my side, it's like, I was that close. I was that close to seeing that. <laughs> I just kind of want to touch a little bit. Uh, when I started kind of prepping for the interview, you know, way back then, I had this whole line about, you know, let's talk about your time in prison. You know, because the, the video, I mean, it always sounds ominous, right? Like, wait, did he go to prison? Like, what happened? I probably should at some point in my life, but luckily God's been looking out for me for a long time. Yeah. But you went in voluntarily to lead worship. And in a previous job, I was responsible for helping support a prison. You know, and it's just weird walking into those places from the outside voluntarily. And it was a women's prison, so that added a little bit of weirdness to my side that I supported. But I've done this. We've been in the women's prison. Me and my wife have gone in. And it's yeah. I mean, any kind of setting like that, you know, it's always from walking in and having everything checked, and you you kind of feel like you know going in just the way everything is done, and then you get and you're with all these men or women, and you know you kind of start thinking, man, what do, what do I have to say to these guys or these women that that's going to like break that wall down between us because they're looking at me as like an outsider. And I think the thing that that made it special the day that we recorded the record in the prison was just the fact that. And we just shared the hope of Christ with these men. And that became our common ground that day. And that's kind of when the wall started to fall was just when I was like, hey, man, I could have been just like you guys. I could have been sitting where you're at on the other side of all of this. And, you know, there's a God out there that loves you guys and and that wants to see you succeed. And and he's willing to give you chance after chance after chance. And and I think whenever that kind of clicked with all these guys of like, hey, man, we can find freedom here in prison. That was when it all it, it was a special day. And so now we have the songs like Fear is a Liar on that perspective. And then, like we're talking about, everything just shut down. No touring. Everybody was locked in their house. And we're all gripped by this fear of the pandemic and what's going to happen around the corner. And we're kind of living a whole different version of that. Um, Can you talk a little bit about being free in Christ, stuff like Fear is a Liar, that song, and kind of how it relates to what we're walking through right now? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, obviously... Being fearful of, you know, Satan is one thing. Being fearful of, I would say, COVID something that we know, you know, we have to be smart about it. I would love to be able to just go out and live my life any way I could and just put all my trust in Jesus. And that's that's what I continue to do. But at the same time, be careless. I have to have to listen to what, you know, our government and our, our leaders tell us that we need to be doing to protect ourselves and keep ourselves safe. So, uh, but I mean, I'm not going to live in fear, you know, letting it control my life and, and I'm not going to live in fear of thinking that my music career is over and I'll never tour again. I'm going to live with the faithfulness of knowing that, hey, God's always provided for me. He's always seen me through it. He's going to continue to do that. And when we get to 21 or 22 or 23, we're going to look back on 2020 and go, man, God was in every moment of 2020 behind the behind the details. And we, we missed it, but he was doing something special then. Just living and knowing that God's not giving us a spirit of fear. That's where I'm at right now with 2020. With this pause, I'd kind of heard a little bit that you took a little bit of time to take care of yourself, some stuff that needed to be attended to, but the touring lifestyle just didn't allow for, and just being able to take that step back. Yeah, and I mean, I think um, off the road in March was, for me, at the time, obviously nobody wanted to do it. I certainly didn't want to, you know, cancel 30-something shows and, and sit at home, but in the end, I, I believe it was a blessing in disguise for me because I was having some some really bad neck issues going on. I had a herniated disc in my neck that was causing me all kinds of trouble with my shoulder every night. And you know, I was laying on a bus just to get ready to go play a show every day and, and then hurting all the time. And so when I came off the road in March, I had a surgery in April. And honestly, by, by mid-May, early June, I was back to normal. And had it not been for that, I wouldn't have taken the time because I'm one of those guys that just pushes myself and I'm on the go all the time. So I, f- I feel like God was like, you need to step back. I'm going to give you this this time to take a break, be with your family this year. And then when all this blows over, we're going to get back on the road and we're going to be out and we're going to be ready to be busy, you know? That's so cool. Through a few of these episodes here like, and talking about this whole thing, I mean, we have this fear and we have all the stuff that we don't like about it, but, you know, just taking this moment to step back and just realize what we are seeing through this whole thing, all the stuff that we get back, 
And like you're saying, you were able to take care of some of the medical issues that you were able to take care of. And and talk about just some of the music and you know, what you've been able to see with the song with Dolly, your new Christmas album, you know, everything that's been able to come out of this time to just sit back and you know take a pause. Yeah, I think, you know, the song with Dolly, when I wrote that song, it's probably been almost a year and a half ago now when I wrote it. And I was writing that from, honestly, the season of life that I walked through, you know, for 20 years, just looking back on the moments in my life where I miss God. You know, I didn't understand what was going on. You know, I, I grew up a Christian. I grew up in church, but I also ran from it for almost 20 years of my life. And so I missed a lot of these moments that God was doing for my life. And that was really where I wrote that song from. Just like, hey, you know, God's been behind the scenes all this time. And so I think to have that song come out in 2020 and really be at a time in our our country where we needed to know that message even more, like, hey, there was Jesus. Like, you're going to look back and see God was in this moment. Um, I think it's been really special just to see the stories and, and the comments. I mean, obviously, it was a little different year with not touring and not getting to be with fans and in person hear stories or shake hands or hug people's necks and thank them for, you know, enjoying this and sharing their stories. But I got to see the comments on online and, and get stories and stuff like that from, from what the song was doing. And so I think any time that you write a song and it connects on a level that there was Jesus has connected. I mean, for me, the nominations for, for awards are great, but I think just the stories alone that I hear from people is enough for me to know, Hey, God's taking these songs and he's doing what I want him to do with these songs. And so it feels really good when people are, are connecting like they are. And one of the things that's cool to see as, you know, a Christian music fan is to see someone like Dolly Parton come in and she's done stuff with for King country. And then, you know, with you as well, and just bringing that conversation to national stage, bringing that star power to that. Yeah. We've also kind of seen that with Chris Tomlin and all of his country records over there, which I mean, he could have picked a better genre than country to connect with, but <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's a common debate in our house, you know, country versus I, rock. And uh, yeah. I grew up in the middle of Wyoming and hate country for some reason. I don't know. I like it all. I grew up with a little bit of everything. I would consider my music almost a melting pot of sorts. So I just kind of sprinkled a little bit of everything I grew up listening to in one, one big pot and just kind of mixed it up. So I don't have a favorite, I, I wouldn't guess. So talk a little bit about that process of working with Dolly. Did you get the call from Dolly or did you have to like beg and plead, stand outside the no. door with a sign? Or No, it's really crazy. I thought I would have to beg and plead, but you know, we got a demo back on this song and, and there was a girl singing a background vocal on it. And the more I listened to the song and, and her voice, I, I would tell my wife and my producer and, and our, you know, management, I was like, man, the girl on the, on the song reminds me of Dolly's voice. I was like, how hard would it be to get, Dolly Parton actually sing on this and everybody just kind of laughed like it'd be really hard you know I kept pushing and I said well can we track down her management and just see if there's any way she'll listen to the song and so we found her you know found her management contact and asked if she'd be willing to take a listen to the song and she said yeah and we sent her song over and she told me that you know she got about halfway into the first chorus and she said I took my headphones off and, and told my management that I wanted to be a part of this song. She said it was a godsend for her because she'd just been praying that God would send her more faith-based music to be a part of. And she thought it was a special song. And, and so uh, we met after that a few weeks later at a studio in Nashville. And she came in and recorded her vocals. And we spent about four hours in the studio just, I mean, kind of getting to know each other and hanging out. And by the end of the day, it kind of felt like an old friend. And she's awesome to work with because, I mean, she obviously is a legend because she's got that work ethic that she always wanted to go for the better take. She was like, I can do a better one. Well, let me do another one. And, and for me, I was really happy if she just said, hey, I'm going to sing my part and leave. I would have been like, okay. But but instead, she was she was there for about four hours. And that was special to me to see somebody who could do anything they want come in and honestly treat it like, hey, this is your song. This is your baby. And I want it to be whatever you want. So I want to serve the song. And, and, and she's like that. She's just one of those people that goes out of her way. And you can tell that's why she's had such a long career because she's just a real down to earth person. That's so cool to hear. I mean, Dolly is legendary status. Like if yeah. you have not heard of Dolly Parton, then I don't know what rock you've been hiding under. And I probably shouldn't say that yeah. because there's the one or two people who are going to get mad at me for it. But <laughs> you know, it's one of those huge legendary names that he kind of knew that there was a little element of faith with her. Like you kind of caught that hint, but you know, now mm -hmm we're getting to see that from that mainstream side, just kind yeah. of an all in towards Christian music. And 
Like I said, we were seeing it with several art, other artists as well. And it's so cool to see that happen and that synergy. Yeah. You know, she grew up in church. I got to hear some of her story. She's always had faith-based music out. And I think a lot of time she's gotten misconstrued by the media over the years. People take take bits of what she says and, and make them headlines. And I think just to hear her and see what she's done with her life and how she served others. I mean, that's what God is. So what do you see about the mainstream collaborations with within Christian music kind of going forward now that we've seen Dolly and some of these other things? Well, I think anytime there's a chance to take a song that, that normally other people wouldn't hear or listen to by adding a, you know, a mainstream or a secular artist, as long as they line up with, with what you know line up with, I think it's a plus. I think it's a win for the kingdom when, if I could take a song to country radio and, millions of people who would have never heard of Zach Williams here, there was Jesus. I think that's a win and vice versa. If I could take a song to, to rock stations and, you know, people hear the message behind a song, I think, you know, there's people out there that, that are going to hear maybe they've never heard and, and it could change their life. I got to ask before we move on from that, did you sure. do the whole celebrity crush thing when Dolly walked in? Like, Oh my gosh, this is Dolly. Like what am I, I was, doing uh, here? I was taken back. I mean, it was, I don't get starstruck very often, but I mean, it was Dolly Parton. And I was like, come on. I grew up listening to her music. I've seen her movies. And I was just like, I can't believe I'm standing here. And But she was just so down to earth. I mean, she she made you feel like you're the only person in the room when she was talking to you. And, and she gave you her undivided attention. And, you know, by the time it was, it was over, I told my wife, I said, I felt like I was hanging out with one of my aunts or something that just cracks jokes all the time. So it was, it was fun. That's so cool. So moving on to your new Christmas song, kind of delving sure. into this Christmas season. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the writing process and what made you come out with a Christmas song this year. Yeah, well, we decided during quarantine, I was getting a little antsy and you know, we were trying to figure out a way to go down and make some music and I haven't put out a full length Christmas record yet. And so the idea was, I've always loved fame studios, muscle shows. I just love the the mystique that that studio has and just every everything that's been recorded and the music that's come out of there in the history. And I told my band and I told everybody, I said, I, w- I would love to take a bunch of these old Christmas standards that we've all grown up listening to, but like, let's reimagine that. And had we recorded these songs in 1968 in that Wilson Pickett kind of Aretha Franklin era, what would these songs sound like if they didn't just sound like Christmas songs, but they sounded more like R&B and soul. And so that was kind of the process behind. We had several days of like pre-pro here in Nashville. And we just kind of put our heads together with a bunch of different ideas and a bunch of versions of these songs. And then we booked about a week down in Muscle Shows. And we actually went down and recorded an entire record with the idea of releasing it this year. But with COVID and everything that's happened and the fact that I can't go out and tour on a Christmas it didn't make sense to to kind of release all that music right now. So we're just giving everybody kind of a sneak peek of, of what to come next year. We've got a full length record that we'll release around Christmas next year that's got a bunch of songs on it and and kind of in that same vein, same vibe. And so I'm I'm really ex- I, I just wanted to be able to showcase a different side of my music and you know let people know, hey, I can, you know, if I need to play country, I could do country or I I could do rock or or soul. Probably the one thing I, I wouldn't go we'll try to do is is put out a rap record. So well, that was just going to be my question is like, when do we have the Zach Williams rap record? You probably won't. No, probably won't happen. Maybe that's the next collaboration because we had the Nelly and the Tim McGraw collab yeah. however long ago. Maybe we need to get you with uh, Lecrae or KJ52, bring KJ back. Or- I actually released, uh, the only way to listen to it is if you if you buy it on vinyl, but I released a, a version of a song I have called Freedom. And we had uh, Marty and Fern from Social Club Misfits do a cool rap on a section of it. We've not released it out to digital yet, but it's coming. And it turned out really cool. Those guys are, are fun to hang with. So you're already ahead of the game and I'm way behind. So, <laughs> man, since this is uh, going to be releasing around the Christmas area, let's uh, talk a little bit about some of the Williams Christmas traditions. And what do you guys normally do around Christmas? Are you guys early decorators, late decorators? My wife had our Christmas tree up like two days after Halloween. Oh, like geez. it was up. There's been stuff out in our house. It looked like Santa's workshop when you go downstairs. It's, it's crazy. You know, my little girl, we do the elf on the shelf with her. That's fun. Last night we decorated gingerbread houses and that's kind of been the thing every year. We, uh, we decide who the teams are going to be in the house and we get a gingerbread house and we see if we can outdo each other. But when it's all said and done, nobody ever wins. We don't have time. So we just like, they all look great and we'll put them out for the year. And 
let them sit on the shelves. And then next year comes around, we do another one. But, you know, we always do that. And uh, when my grandparents were still alive, we would always get together and have a big Christmas thing back in Arkansas where my family all lives. We moved to Nashville about three and a half, four years ago. And we just kind of started to try to kind of do our own things. We've got some friends in our neighborhood that we hang with and they've all got kids about our kids' age. And we'll do a Christmas dinner here at our house and, and just kind of take it easy. But yeah, I mean, we, we uh, friends will do some stuff with on Christmas Eve and then, you know, the big Christmas morning opening gifts with the kids and just kind of hanging out and eating all day, I guess. Well, that's the best part, right? Is there's like a yeah. free hall pass to eat whatever sweets you want eat whatever you want. It's like Thanksgiving on steroids as far as some of the treats go. Me and my wife both started the keto diet like Thanksgiving just so we could eat what we wanted on Christmas. So it's like we do a month of keto and then we can do what we want for the, for the holidays and then maybe try to get back on some sort of healthy diet in the first of the year. So, Well, if you do it long enough, you can have a cheat day. And did you ever actually stop the keto diet if it's just Christmas day? You, you really don't. I think I've done it. I did it last year for a few months and, and did really well on it. And, that, and those carb days help you kind of boost yourself back if you've not been doing it for a while. Maybe I won't have to worry too much about getting back in, in the keto thing. So as we get past Christmas, a lot of the tours that I'm hearing are starting back up, you know, about February, March-ish, depending on yeah. kind of what part of the country and all that. What are you most excited about? getting back out on the road and being able to get back to shows and everything. I think the biggest thing for us is just being back out and seeing bands, playing music live in person, hearing a crowd, hearing stories. I mean, that that's what it's all about. You know, it's just that connection that I have on a personal level with people. And so for me, that's, that's the thing I've missed. And obviously, I mean, I, I just love music and I've missed that this year. So I know for the fan side, there's just something special about live music for me. The sound coming from the speakers, the subs bumping, just the whole atmosphere of just live sound. You know, it's not always as refined and as pristine like it is on the digital because you have one take that night. And yeah, being a guitar player myself, if you hit a wrong note, you're you're done. Like that's what it is. But well, live music is just, I mean, and for bands, I think you feed up the energy of the crowd. And you have your good nights and then you have your great nights where it's just like, man, there was something special happening tonight. And I think that's what I love about it is it's never the same. And you're always looking for that next one because it could be one the, the night you had before. And so, um, but yeah, that's the, that's the plus side to, to live music versus let's go in and record it and make it perfect and, and send it out. I personally love the imperfections and stuff. Same here. And. I mean, sometimes you just got to laugh at yourself. Yeah, you know, if you hit the wrong yep. note, just hope that the reverb oh. and the delay wasn't on too long. Forget the lyrics or that's going to be the hardest thing, I think, is going back out and playing music after not playing for so long, just being able to remember all the all the words to everything. There's just something like what you're saying special from this side as well. And I'm glad to hear that it is that way from the stage as well, because when you get done with a concert, you don't go back and repeat that like you do on an album. Like that was the experience. That was the time. Now it's a memory. You don't put it on your playlist and keep going. And like, I personally can't wait to get back to live music just for a lot of those things. Yeah. It does something to your soul that nothing else can do. And I need that. People do. And and I think people are ready for it. I'm ready for it. I know, I know I'm ready for us to figure out a way to just move forward and, and continue on. And there's that connection that happens just even in worship. And we've all been kind of separated for the last thing. It's almost been nine months now, or if it hasn't already. There's just something about when you're talking about the message, when you're talking about God's goodness and everything that he does, you know, in that moment of worship, when you're seeing the person next to you just full out in worship, like I've seen these worship memes where you can have like the hand raiser, you have the hand in the pocket, and then you have the yeah. people who are like full both hands like going. And there's just something special when, that move happens when you see all these people just lost in worship right next to you. And there's just nothing like that solidarity in a room. No, no, those are the special nights. I mean, and those are the nights where you walk off stage and, and, and realize you forgot lyrics or you messed up a guitar chord because you just completely got lost in the moment, you know, and, and it's all right to do that. I, I think that that's what makes it special. Well, like I said, I'm hoping that you come back through Dallas here shortly because this time I'm going to go to the venue no matter what, even if they tell me to shut down. <laughs> I ain't stopping. Like we're coming. Oh, yeah, for sure. You have to come, come say hi in person. Absolutely. And so we're looking forward to that. And then like, so we have the, we love awards that the voting is open. It goes until you know, January, February. So, you know, as you're cool. listening to this episode, the voting is still open unless you're listening in 2021, then you're out of luck. But 
Yeah, like I said, there's there's a lot of good stuff. We're we're happy to have you nominated. Like I said, if we haven't had you nominated before, we're really happy that we fixed the problem this year. Awesome. Yeah, I have to go back and check, but I want to say this is the first time I, I remember being nominated, so it's pretty cool. So we know that you're going to be getting on, and at least 50 of the votes are going to be from Zach himself. There you go. I'm going to get on right now. All the kids are on their iPads in your house like, hey, we're voting for daddy. Exactly. Cool. Well, we appreciate you hanging out with us here for a while, Zach. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for hanging out with us for this episode of the NRT Now podcast. Be sure to subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And special thanks to Neon Feather for providing our theme music. Make sure to check out newreleasetoday.com and our socials for more great content. See you next episode.